you. Okay. So today I wanted to talk about developer portals, right? And this is important because I will not be talking about developer platforms. Even though most of you are adopting portals thinking that portal and a platform is the same thing, right? And uh, if you don't believe me, then just go next room to BackstageCon. You will see that they talk about portals as platforms. And this talk will receive a lot of hate. I see that in advance. Anyways, so I will talk about developer portals. And in my talk, I will assume that that's the last thing you're thinking about, right? You don't start with the front end of something. Imagine any application you're developing, right? You don't start with the front end. You develop, probably you start by defining the API schema of something that you will be developing. And then once you have the schema, then everybody can do their st stuff. People can create services. Other people can set up databases. They're talking through those APIs. And eventually, front-end front emerges. And front-end is dumb, right? You don't put logic in your front-end. I'm not talking about portals now, just to be clear, right? You don't put logic in your front-end. Front-end is a graphical representation of what your application sitting in your cluster can do, right? You know, get, put, post, whatever requests your portals are making uh, to the API. So, assumption of my talk today is that you set up your platform. You have your platform up and running, right? You have a control plane that is managing your resources. You have some workflows that are building your images, running tests, doing whatever they're doing and so on and so forth, right? Security is there, storage is there, networking is there. You have everything set up, and then, only then, you start thinking, okay, you know what? Maybe some people like clicking buttons in my company, right? It's nice. I'm going to make a very col colorful UI that people can use to make their lives easier, and that's absolutely great. Just an important note about everything I will say that you do that at the end. But you already did everything else. Important. OK, cool. I will try to be brief. I like leaving more time uh, for questions, so we'll see how that goes. I will do live demo, because talks without demo are just marketing pitch. Uh, and it will most likely fail. So you've been warned on many different levels in advance. If you want to ask me questions, that's my face. Um, that's how I react to it. OK. so. You have a platform, you have your APIs, you have everything, you're building a portal, user interface. Now, there are many user interfaces, and most likely you will need to have many user interfaces for people to interact with your platform, right? Some people like using CLIs. Some people like pushing things to Git. Some people like using web UIs, right? You're going to accommodate all of them. And that's another reason why it's very, very important that you don't put logic in your portal simply because then you are limiting yourself to only one way to access your platform. That would be the same thing, imagine, I mean, AWS in a way is a platform, right? That you are, some of you are consuming. Imagine if AWS would say, oh, the logic is in a, in a console. The only way you can create AWS resources is through web console, right? Unacceptable, anyways. But we are talking still about portals today. Uh, and one thing that annoyed me a lot in the past is that portals do not tend to think the way I think, and that's very annoying to me. Um, and they somehow assume always that the rest of the system does not exist. And I know that this sounds strange. I will show you why, why I'm saying that later, right? But more importantly for my concept, uh, for my talk, is that portals, most of the time, ignore the fact that we live in 2024. And I'm saying that because they ignore the fact that there is an API to do something. And one very important characteristic of an API is discoverability, right? I can go to some API and say, tell me what, what I can do, right? What are the operations I can perform with you, right? And it will give you a list. You can say, hey, I would like to, uh, in that list there is something called deployment, right? Uh, I would like to create a deployment. What is the schema of deployment? And the API will give you the schema, right? So 
If I'm right in that assumption, there is no good reason why you would ever have to define those things in portals, right? Because schemas are discoverable. APIs have schemas that are discoverable. And yet, more often than not, uh, we're faced with something like this, right? This is an example, and this is in no way me trying saying good, bad. I'm using examples with different projects just to demonstrate something. Not, it's not a statement whether something is good or no, All right? Now, I have a cluster right now running on this laptop, because you're not good enough for me to spend money on you. Uh, and that cluster has acts as a platform, right? It's a Kubernetes cluster extended with some tools. It has API, and I created custom resource definitions. Custom resource definitions are how we extend Kubernetes cluster. So I have a custom resource definition that defines how people can manage database, right? Relatively easy, straightforward. Anybody can do it in Kubernetes. It's not a mystery. And now I would like to enable those people, uh, people in my organization, to do that through a web UI. Now, if I would like to do that right now, uh, I would uh, actually, uh, let me go first uh, here. Uh, let's do SQL claim recursive, right? This is me proving to you that if I ask Kubernetes cluster, what is the schema of this something, I get it, right? It's available there, it's discoverable. My CRD, my custom resource definition, is available to anybody who has access to this cluster. So no mystery there. Yet, if I use the tools that we have in the market, uh, like this one, um, uh, we will do something like this. Backstage, cross-plane, let's say, which one? This one, right? Uh, I would need to define all this, right? Now, you don't have time to ponder what is this. But what does matter is that those couple of hundred, of hundred of lines of YAML is what is absolutely, without doubt, required, without doing heavy development of your own plugins, to bring what some, something that already exists in my Kubernetes cluster and that is discoverable, I need to reproduce it again. I need to write it again in a slightly different format that is almost the same format as CRDs, but sufficiently different that you cannot use it, right? And then if I would like to create the, those databases that I was mentioning, um, I need to define this as well, right? Which again, if you look at this thing, you don't have time to, to, to go into details, but this is again exactly the same as what you saw before, which is exactly the same as what the CRD that I define, which is exactly the same as the, what the API would give me if I ask it for, and so on and so forth. Now, I can spend 20 minutes to show you all the files that I had to define to get something very, very simple. You just need to trust me that there is much more to it than that, right? So, uh, to me, that's so annoying that I have to do the same thing over and over and over again because tools think that APIs don't exist. I started, that was like a year ago, I started complaining to all the projects. Backstage, uh, port, uh, five, six, seven other projects are kind of like, this is insane. I don't want to do this. I don't want to spend the time to recreate the same thing. And they finally did it. At least port one uh, that I will, I will show you uh, right now. And uh, that one, actually, before I show you anything, I, I said that this is a live demo. Let me see whether it's running. I'm going to delete the pod just in case, you know, because if there is a problem, you know that problem is always solved by restarting things. Um, anyway, so uh, what, what they did, and I'm showing this more as, uh, as the path forward, not uh, as endorsement of port. Actually, before I show you anything, just a proof that I'm not cheating here. Uh, there is nothing here, right? I did not define my catalog. Oh, I was about to say I, I, I was about to say that I didn't because I thought that I deleted it before I came to this session. So I'm going to do. Imagine that you haven't seen this. <laughs> That's a very important assumption. Oh, uh, and you haven't seen this either. And 
This is very annoying. Uh, you know, many people tell me that I should come better prepared for my talks. And I think that they are insane. Um, I'm getting there, I promise. It's a live demo, I said that it's going to fail. And uh, Anyways, um, imagine that I didn't mess it up. This is all empty, right? Uh, I'm going to delete it again, just in case. Um, I'm starting from scratch. And uh, one nice thing over here is data sources. And basically, this is me telling, uh, by the way, if you haven't, you, any, any of you use port already, no? Yes, only few? Uh, cool, doesn't matter. What does matter is that you can write thousands of lines of YAML or JSON to define what something is, right? And, and then we did this. And this is basically telling it, you know what? I want you to discover what are all the capabilities of your control plane. What are all the things that you can do with your platform? And I will, I will paint it on a screen for you, right? Because I will discover the schema and everything. And basically here I'm saying, uh, you know what? Get me, get me all, give me all cross-plane resources. I'm using cross-plane because I work with cross-plane, but same thing applies to anything else. Uh, I'm going to say resync, and then imagining that you haven't seen uh, that I messed it up, uh, these things would appear, right? And this is platform being dumb, being stupid, saying, I don't know how to do anything, but I know how to ask API what can be done. And it discovered that in my cluster, people can uh, create something called cluster claim, something called SQL claim, something called up claim, right? They can manage clusters themselves, they can manage databases, and they can manage applications, uh, and those, th those things can run in Kubernetes, they can run in Azure, AWS, a lot of things that they can do, right? Simple instructions. And we got that uh, discovered by the, uh, by the portal, and which doesn't know anything about them. The only thing it knows is how to retrieve schema from the API. That's the only thing uh, it's doing for now. And it generated, uh, because it knows that Kubernetes can always do cr CRUD operations. You can create something, you can update something, and you can delete something, right? And the schema of that something is, uh, is retrieved from the API. And then I can, my developers can just, and by the way, this would be always up to date. If I ever change my platform, whatever the platform is, it would automatically sync those changes to the portal and portal would take it into account and so on and so forth. And then people can, hey, I want a database. I can uh, enter some form, right? And then the portal will again do nothing. And by nothing, I mean it will send a webhook request somewhere and then that something will do the actual work of making this happen. I will show you that in a second. Uh, for now, uh, let me show you actually what it discovered, right? This is, uh, this is the JSON that you would be forced to write. And you will have to do that in every tool, right? Uh, and this is the JSON that was discovered. And then I can change things. I can modify it to be more user friendly or whatever, but I don't need to write a scheme. I can say, yeah, this field should be enabled and uh, I can save it and uh, I can go back there. And if you don't like JSON, you can use the form and say, uh, you know what, the platform calls this thing uh, composition ref name, this is silly, let's call it name or let's call it composition, uh, composition and uh, Let's say that um, my schema doesn't know that there could be some selection, so I'm going to uh, let people select some values, and those values will be, let's say, if you can create a database that is AWS PostgreSQL, you can create uh, Azure, Azure PostgreSQL, and you can create, how much time I have? Oh, plenty. Um, AWS PostgreSQL, and you can now play with it as much as you want. Let's do one more just for the sake of uh, making it uh, nice. Let's say size. Uh, this is a silly name. I'm going to change the name to size. Uh, size. 
and I'm going to say, hey, people in my company, they can create databases and they have no idea what is T2 something something in AWS and whatever is in Azure, I'm going to make it, uh, make them be able to choose between small, medium, and large, let's say, right? Save, save, and schema is invalid. Uh, what did I do? This card changes. Uh, I said it's going to fail. Um, anyways, ignore that. If I didn't mess it up, you would have drop down lists here that you could choose things and do whatever you need to do. There is one more thing that I need to do that is not discoverable. Um, and that is that what will happen when somebody uses that schema from the phone, generates some data, what happens with that data? Right? And again, it's dumb. It doesn't know what to do with it. But I can tell it what to do to do with it uh, by saying, you know what? Uh, this is my GitHub organization. Uh, this is the repository. What is the name of the repository? I have it written here. Uh, port CRD is demo, and GitOps uh, YAML is the file. So just w when you generate that data, send it to GitHub Actions in this case, and GitHub Actions will do the work, right? So portal is never doing the work. I'm going to save it, and I'm going to say, okay, uh, let's create, what should we use today? Um, um, let me see, let me think, AWS Postgres. I think that I set up as AWS PostgreSQL database. Um, uh, we want the PostgreSQL in AWS. We're going to call it MyDB, MyDB. I'm a developer now, right? I'm going to run this in the my namespace A team. I want medium database because small is too, mo too small for me. And uh, what is the, I always forget, I think it's 16.2, uh, one of the versions in AWS, right? Execute. Now, something now will be happening, but again, not by portal. GitHub Actions are doing something. I will show you what, uh, what is happening, uh, because this will give you the opportunity to see my artistic aspirations. I spent a lot of time drawing this for you guys. So what happened so far, right? I have my, uh, this is my, this is a simple version, simple explanation of my portal, right? Your, uh, sorry, not portal, platform. Yours will be different. I have a Kubernetes cluster there in the corner on the right. Uh, my Kubernetes cluster is acting as a control plane. It is controlling, managing resources, doing the stuff that Kubernetes is doing. I'm using Crossplane to manage resources in AWS, Azure, wherever that is. I have Argo CD. Everybody knows what Argo CD is doing in synchronizing things between Git repo and my cluster. And I have port on the top as a portal that is uh, providing one, not the only, but one of the ways people can interact with my platform and that interaction always goes through the API. So, port discovered what is possible to do, right? Uh, just ask the cluster, what can I do? Uh, and the cluster responded, you can manage databases and clusters and applications. Cool, right? Converted those things into field that I can adjust or not. And uh, when I, as a developer, interact with the portal, portal again just collects the data from the form, doesn't do much more, and sends the request somewhere. And that somewhere, in my case, is GitHub Actions. Yours could be something else, right? And that something takes the data, generates manifest, pushes it to Git, maybe builds some container image, does whatever you need to do, right? Uh, you have workflows, you have pipelines, you're already doing it, nothing new is happening here, right? Uh, and at one moment, that GitHub action pushed something to Git. What happens when you push something to Git? Some manifest, Argo CD is monitoring, finds, oh, this is different than what you have there, and it's synchronizing it into a cluster, right? That's all there is to it. It's relatively simple. And then that cluster creates resources wherever those resources are. Um, so uh, let's take a look. Uh, I'll, I'll show you how much time I have. Uh, five minutes, not much. Um, let's see whether it worked. Uh, probably didn't. It didn't. Uh, no. It didn't. Imagine that it did work. <laughs> you would have things, 
I don't have enough time to debug it, right? Don't do live demos. That's my recommendation. Uh, you would, what, what would happen is that uh, here, basically when I said, hey, uh, send the data somewhere, I executed this GitHub action, right? This GitHub action is just a dumb, really dumb one, just generates a YAML file and pushes it to Git, right? That, that's what it does, nothing else. And that, if it worked, and if I had time to debug, you would see, maybe it did, who knows, pull. Yeah, actually it did work. I was just impatient. You see this file that was generated for me as a result of the, that, that, that GitHub action, right? And it generated the manifest that is required for people to have database in AWS, right? Um, and then if everything worked, kubectl get managed, let's see. Yeah, Argo CD synchronized it into a cluster. Cluster got a new resource. I want a database, Crossplane created all the resources, and I got subnets and objects and instances and route tables and all the things that a developer should never see, see simply because nobody cares about those things but one person in a company. And my database is right now being created. It takes around 20 minutes. In AWS, it will have the scheme. It will have absolutely everything I need. And all I did on a portal level is just tell it, uh, here's the API, discover what can be done, and show it on a screen. That's all there is to it. And everybody will probably get disappointed in me saying that. And uh, I don't know if I have more slides. I want to answer, answer a couple of questions. Uh, let's see whether it worked. Uh, three minutes for questions. All right, let's do questions. Who cares about slides? There's the last slide. I have a last slide. There we go. Uh, this is the last slide. Anyways, uh, questions, anybody? No? Is that because no other speaker before asked for questions and now you're not used to it? Because you're shy? No? If you told me that one, ah, oh, there we, there is. I was about to say, if you told me in advance, I would speak longer then. I'll come to you then. <laughs> Likewise. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. So the question, just because she doesn't have mic, do you have the way to show the end user the status? Yes and no at the same time. Uh, the short answer is yes, uh, because if, if this worked, uh, maybe it works now, you would see a new entry, my database, whatever was created, and you would see two things. First, you would see the information that people submitted in that form. That's day zero. Everybody can do that, right? But then the same agent that is running in the cluster that is in charge of discoverability is feeding portal back with the information because, again, it knows the API. It knows where to find it. So if this worked, you would see the status of that something. Uh, and uh, logs and events and whatever, right? Now, that was the yes part of the answer. There is a no part. And the no part is that the way how Kubernetes is designed is that you don't work with a single resource. You work with many resources. Simplest example is you create a deployment. Deployment creates replica set. Replica sets creates pods, right? Now, if you look at the status of deployment, it says, great. I'm living happily ever after. This is Disneyland for me, right? even though the pods might be failing. And then you have two options if you want to show statuses. Either you show statuses of everything to everybody, which I think is silly, because the only reason I'm using this is because I don't understand Kubernetes is enough detail to debug all that stuff. So if you show me 57,000 different resources and say, go ahead, I'm going to get confused. But if you show me only the status of the root resources at the top, then I don't see anything either. And I think that that's a problem we have in Kubernetes in general. We still didn't figure out a standard way how to propagate events up the chain, right? So I would like to see, and this is on a Kubernetes level, nothing to do with the portal, how can we filter which part of the statuses of pods and events matter that should go up and which don't? 
I, uh, we made some progress in that area uh, with some status transformers and stuff, but it would take me too much time to, to dive into it. Anybody else? Adam, do I have time? I don't have time. Four seconds over the. Am I going to be the first one who ends on time? No. One more question. Yes. Oh, nobody comes to me. Okay, tell me. Like Jenkins. No, you shouldn't be doing those things. <laughs> that's why we have GitOps, and that's why you should be pushing there and let the tools do the stuff, right? So if you want to uh, roll back, for example, you don't roll back with the workflows, you roll back with Argo rollouts or Flagger, right, inside of Kubernetes cluster. Uh, if you want, whatever you want to do, you should think of how can, which controller should I put in my cluster that will do that something, right? Uh, and then once you do that, so your cluster is performing operations. Your workflows are just executing whatever the tasks are necessary and are one shot. So this is my story, right? There are two types of operations you want to do. One shot operations that are happening once and once and never again. That's building images, running tests. Unless you have flaky tests, then, then you're not doing that. Uh, and then state management. State management, we solve that. Kind of like push it to Git, let Targo CD or Flux do the work. It will manage the state for you. You're done. I don't have Paul, or you're going to kick me out, right? <laughs> OK, I'm over the time. Because others get more time. I don't. <laughs> She's evil. That's not even true. OK, uh, thank you very much, Victor. Big round of applause.